Okay, next up on stage, we have Tom Brake, MP, who's from the Liberal Democrats. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that it's been quite lonely in Parliament as someone who's been campaigning for Remain. So it is fantastic to come here today and see you, see the backing that we have in Parliament. Now, I have to, to declare an interest. Uh, I lived in France for 10 years, so bonjour mes amis français. My parents then went to live in Portugal for 10 years, so hola, uh, os meus amigos portugueses, uh, también. And so I'm a beneficiary. My family, my parents, I and, and my sisters have been a beneficiary of things like freedom of movement, the ability to work and live and study in other EU countries. And that is a, a right that I wanted my children to have and I wanted your children and your grandchildren to have. And that is why, as a party, we are campaigning as hard as we can to try and ensure that the rights of EU citizens in the UK are safeguarded. We want the government to do that unilaterally. Now, they say, well, if we were to do that, then, of course, we would have conceded something uh, and the, the other countries would have banked that. Of course, that's not true because we know that there are over three million EU citizens in the UK and there are one or just over one, 1.2 million uh, UK citizens in the EU. And it'd be very strange in those circumstances if the other EU countries didn't reciprocate with exactly the same rights as we had granted their citizens. So we will continue to press the government on that. Unfortunately, we have in the Brexiteers a group of people who understand uh, the price of everything but the value of nothing. So the connections that we have with other EU countries, the learning another language, learning about another culture, those things are of value, intrinsic value, but the Brexiteers can't put a price on it. We know that this helps to build relationships, this strengthens our links with other countries, makes us more internationalist. And that is why, as a party, we will continue to campaign on these issues. Now, we've heard about the lies, and I suspect every speaker has referred to the lies. Now, I'll start with the biggest one, which is the £350 million a week for the NHS. Now, I was in Wallington High Street this morning, we are campaigning for the £400 million that is needed to invest in St. Helier Hospital. That is just over a week of the £350 million a week that's going to come back. And of course, with that money, we could rebuild every hospital around the country, literally within a year. But we all know that that was a lie. We know also that what was said about immigration was a lie. In practice, we know that the UK economy, whether it's agriculture or IT, or the NHS, is very heavily dependent on citizens from other EU countries. Those citizens will continue uh, to come to the United Kingdom. They're probably less likely to do so because they feel that uh, this is a country that is not welcoming anymore, but we will need them for our economy for years, decades uh, to come. Now, the impact... The impact of us leaving the European Union, or, or announcing we're leaving the European Union, uh, has led to, as we know, very significant rise in inflation, which means that wages now in the UK are falling behind the rate of inflation. And one of the unexpected consequences of that, of course, is that many of the nurses who used to come to work at my hospital, who typically were from Portugal, from Spain or Italy, are no longer coming partly because the amount of money they could send home has reduced as a result, a, a result of the crash in the value of the pound, also because the country is less welcoming. And how have the hospital responded to this? Understandably, they need the staff, so what they are doing 
is they are paying a thousand pounds a visa for nurses to come from India or the Philippines instead. So that is a consequence of Brexit that the Brexiteers did not talk about. Yes, they will still be coming, working in our NHS, but actually for the NHS it's going to cost them more than under the previous uh, arrangements. Now, in terms of other, other lies, the trade deals. Well, we've heard about the trade deals. We've had our Prime Minister going to uh, Japan. And what is she negotiating? What are they offering us? Well, exactly the same deal as, we've got to, as they've got with the European Union. So far from being able to negotiate fantastic new deals, all-encompassing deals, what we're going to get as the United Kingdom is exactly the same deal as the EU has just managed to secure uh, with Japan. And as for taking back control, now, we've been debating in Parliament the EU withdrawal bill. Now, that is the bill that is going to incorporate into UK law all the EU uh, legislation. And what is happening is that the ministers are saying, well, we're in a bit of a rush. Uh, we've got quite a lot of legislation, in fact, 40 years worth, that we've got to try and quickly incorporate into UK law. So you, members of Parliament, actually, we don't really want you to be part of this process. We're not going to allow you, in the normal way, to debate this as a bill that starts in the Commons, then goes to the Lords, perhaps have a bit of ping-pong as you change the bill coming backwards and forwards. They want to use a short-circuited process uh, which really cuts members of Parliament out of the process altogether. So uh, I must say the spectacle of people like Bill Cash, arch-Brexiteer, who has spent the whole of his political career arguing, rightly in my view, for parliamentary sovereignty, the spectacle of him justifying this bill and saying that there was nothing wrong with this bill, uh, frankly, was nauseous. Now, and just, just to add insult to injury, uh, we, are, we have seen the government announcing that they are going to try and stack in their favour all the standing committees that are going to have to debate these things, even though ha they have not got a majority. They're saying, well, we're entitled to a majority. We are saying, and hopefully on Tuesday, uh, Liberal Democrats, Labour, SNP, Plaid, etc., hopefully some sensible Tories will say, this is unacceptable. This is uh, really trampling over parliamentary sovereignty. I haven't got time to mention about, not we've talked about the lies, but there are many things that were not said by the Brexiteers. Now, did any of you hear the Brexiteers saying during the course of the campaign, well, it might cost us between 30 and 50 billion pounds as a settlement? Of course they didn't mention that. They didn't mention, and this has been confirmed to me by, by many diplomats, that the UK has lost international influence as a result of leaving or announcing we're leaving the European Union. And why are they saying that? They're saying that, well, we know, you know so India, Russia, China, they want to deal with the European Union, a very large bloc, 500 million people, very rich, very influential. They will deal with that as a priority. And the perception amongst diplomats now is that as long as they've got the US on board, then the UK will ta tail along behind and we don't need to worry about the United Kingdom. So forget global Britain. This has actually made us a much smaller, much in less influential uh, country. So I'd just like to finish by saying that, I mean, our anger at the lies of the Brexiteers is understandable, but we need to make sure as this event is doing that we are converting this into action and activity, that we are building a mass movement uh, on the scale of, if not like, that of Donald Trump's. So that we have got people who are out there on the streets, we've got people there on social media who are banging out a positive, truthful message about the benefits of being in the European Union so that we can prepare for uh, a, a, an exit from Brexit 
and really ensure that what started with democracy, we may not have liked the outcome on the 23rd of June last year, but must end in democracy and the democracy that is represented by you here today and to make sure that we can stay in the European Union. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.